In this video, I'd like to try to figure out how much force is required to get an object to start moving from rest, taking into account the force of friction. Now one of the first things that you should do when you begin a problem is to draw a coordinate system. The coordinate system is going to tell us which direction the forces are acting relative to each other. So in this case, I'm going to call the horizontal direction the x direction, and the up and down direction the y direction. Now in this video, what I want to do is try to figure out how much force is required to overcome the frictional force and get an object to start moving, and in this case, get that object to start moving in the positive x direction. Now we need to know a few things. We need to know the mass of this object. So in this case, let's say that we're working with a box with a mass of 50 kilograms. Now the weight of an object that has a mass of 50 kilograms will work out to be the mass of the object times the gravitational acceleration, which in this case should work out to be 490 newtons. Or this works out to also be about 110 pounds. Now the next thing, you want to know what the coefficient of static friction is. And in this case, I'm assuming that this is a wooden box along a wooden floor. And when I looked up the coefficient of static friction for wood on wood, I found that the coefficient of static friction was about 0.5. Remember, this is a unitless number. It's an experimentally determined or derived value. If we look at this picture, we're going to try to apply a force in the positive x direction. Now, what's going to happen is the force of static friction is going to oppose this force, the forward motion of this box, until we reach a minimum value. Then what's going to happen is this box is going to start to slide across the floor. So these are, so these are the two forces acting in the x direction. Now there's another force acting on this box in the downward direction. The force of gravity is pulling this box downwards towards the center of the earth. Then what's happening, the surface that this box is resting on is pushing this box in the upward direction preventing it from moving through the floor. And where is that force coming from? This box is compressing the atoms in the floor, and those atoms are therefore pushing back upwards on this box. Now there's a relationship between the force of static friction and the normal force, and that, and that relationship says the force of static friction is equal to this thing we call the coefficient of static friction times the normal force acting on this object. Now we usually say the force of static friction is proportional to the normal force, and the proportionality constant is this coefficient of static friction. So now, to figure out what the force of static friction is, we need to know what the normal force is acting on this object. Before we go any further, let's just draw a free body diagram that represents the forces acting on this object. So before we go any further, we're going to draw a free body diagram that represents the forces acting on this box. So if we represent the box as a point, as a dot, we're going to draw the forces acting on it. Now, there's going to be the force due to our pull, pulling this box in the positive x direction there's going to be the force of static friction opposing that motion, and that force is directed in the negative x direction. There's going to be a weight force acting on this box, pulling this in the downward direction, and then there's going to be a normal force pushing up on this box, preventing it from passing through the surface of the Earth. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out what the normal force acting on this object is. So to do that, we're going to use Newton's second law. So Newton's second law says that when we add up all the forces in the y direction, it's going to equal the mass of the object times the acceleration of the object in the y direction. Now this object is not being lifted up off the floor, so the acceleration in the y direction is zero. So when we add up all the forces acting on this object in the y direction, they're going to add up to be zero. Now there are two forces acting on this object. There's the normal force acting in the upward direction, which sometimes we can write as plus the normal force indicating it's acting in the positive y direction. And then we're going to subtract off the weight force because the weight force is acting in the opposite direction, the downward direction. And those two forces, they're going to add up to be zero. So what we need to do to find the normal force is we need to add the weight force to both sides of this equation. What you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other. And what you'll see is that the normal force is going to equal the weight force. Now this is the actual weight force, not the apparent weight. Sometimes we call this the gravitational weight force. And what you should know from a previous video is that the weight force is equal to the mass of the object times the gravitational acceleration of the object. So what we just found was that the normal force acting on this object is going to equal the mass of the object times the gravitational acceleration of this object. So we can go back to our equation for static friction, and we can say the force of static friction, which is equal to, to the coefficient of static friction, times the normal force is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the mass of the object times the gravitational acceleration of the object. Now in this case we said the coefficient of static friction was 0.5, remember a unitless number, and we said the mass of this object was 50 kilograms times the gravitational acceleration which is 9.8 meters per second per second or meters per second squared, and this number should work out to be 245 newtons. So the force of static friction is going to oppose 
the forward motion of this object with a force of 245 newtons. So to figure out how much force is required to get this object to start moving in the positive x direction, we need to use Newton's second law, in this case, in the x direction. So let's use Newton's second law in the x direction. So when we add up the forces in the x direction, it's going to equal the mass of the object times the acceleration of the object in the x direction. Now what we're looking to do is we're looking to get this object to start moving from rest. So the initial velocity is zero. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out how much force is required to get this object just to start moving from rest. And in that case, the acceleration is essentially zero. So when you add up the forces acting on the object in the x direction, they're going to add up to be zero. So now there's two forces acting in the x direction. There's the force due to our pull in the positive x direction, and then there's going to be the opposing force, the static frictional force, acting in the opposite direction. And those forces are going to add up to be zero. Now the reason I subtracted the force of static friction is because it's acting in the opposite direction of the applied force. Now to figure out how much force is required to get this object to start moving, we're going to solve for this force. And in this case, we add the force of static friction to both sides. What you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other side. And when you do that, you get the force equals the force of static friction, which we figured out was 245 newtons. So a minimum force of 245 newtons is required to get this object to start moving from rest when that force is directed completely along the horizontal axis. In the next video, what we'll take a look at is how much force is required to get the same object to start moving if we apply a force at a different angle with respect to the horizontal.